Hello everybody, thank you for joining us at the Universal Observations uh, channel here. Um, first I'd like to point out uh, here at Universal Observations, one of the things we like to do is um, find or help you find uh, some things that might be difficult to find online. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be talking about the William Optics uh, Zenith Star 61 and some of the accessories. Um, I, uh, I was imaging doing astrophotography with just a DSLR and uh, some standard camera lenses. And in my light polluted area, I just wasn't having the results that I wanted. So I went ahead and purchased this William Optics uh, Zenith Star 61 and uh, uh, wanted to point out some things that I found um, difficult to find answers for when I was researching uh, this telescope. The first thing was uh, I noticed that there were different pictures of, of this scope, maybe different versions, uh, different options. I wasn't sure what was going on. Specifically, uh, well, a couple of things. Uh, first was this uh, uh, lens cap. And I noticed different pictures, not only on the William Optics site, but on uh, several different dealer sites. And it looks like the standard, the only one available now, you don't have to choose this, is this uh, little bit deeper lens cap here. And it turns out, uh, hopefully you can see this in the video, that this says diffraction spikes and it's got a little, little uh, batten off. Uh, diffraction spike uh, kind of uh, graphics on there. Uh, the other thing that I couldn't find was how did this attach? Number one, the, the whole lens cap pulls off. It's felt lined. It's a very nice fit. Uh, and then the uh, end of this screws off and that's what exposes the uh, the batten off mask inside of there. Now, again, I wanted to point out um, this is this appears to not be an option. This comes standard with the telescope now. Now, I ordered this uh, the end of December of 2018, uh, arrived uh, beginning of 2019, and also uh, some questions that I had was how does this thing fit on here? Well, it just screws here on the end and. Uh, of course, now that I'm doing the video, I'm having a little difficulty time. Here we go. Uh, so that screws back on. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out, uh, and this can be especially uh, necessary to understand if you're out in the dark and in the driveway, uh, maybe over cement. Uh, when I first pulled this out of the box and was taking a look at it, I had the tube extended with the lens cap on. And when I closed it, here's what happened. The lens cap fell off. Now, um, you know, hopefully you're not removing and adding your lens cap uh, during the night, but uh, especially if you're over a cement driveway, that's something that uh, you should probably pay very much attention to. The second thing that I wanted to point out was this uh, mounting ring and mounting foot. Um, I couldn't find much information on it. It does on the website say that it is reversible. So uh, one of the first things that I did is I reversed it uh, from front facing to rear facing to better the balance. And I couldn't quite understand from the pictures how to do that. So there's this nice little uh, screw here. You, you remove this, it opens up this clamp. Uh, there's a nice hinge here on this side and that allowed me to very easily just swap that around. The other thing that I couldn't find were, were specifications on this mounting foot. So first of all, this mounting foot is not a Vixen style mounting foot. Uh, it is rounded uh, here at the end. It is not uh, beveled. Uh, so again, it's just not a, a Vixen style mounting foot. So you're going to need to add some type of mounting plate to this, depending on what uh, mount you put this on. Um, uh, William Optics has a few of those, and uh, I found some different ones online. Uh, very similar pricing uh, for those as well. So <clears throat> uh, these outside screws are quarter by 20, and the inside is, is 3 8 uh, so it should be some standard mountings. What I wanted to do here is show with some calipers maybe what the dimensions are. Now let me put this in millimeters here, and this looks to be, and this is not by any means a scientific measurement. Uh, center to center, a little bit over 29 millimeters. And then from the front hole to the 3.8, uh, a little bit over 14.84 uh, here. So uh, hopefully that helps you out, gives you an understanding of, of what those dimensions are. Um, if you're looking to determine whether or not it's going to mount uh, for your application. I'm going to move the telescope out of the way a little bit here and bring in this. Now, this is the uh, 
new flat 61 and you can see here it's actually labeled as hopefully you can see this it's labeled as adjustable flattener flat 61a uh, the previous generation the the flat 61a uh, i'm sorry the flat 661 uh, appears to be discontinued on the William Optic site, and and this is the only one available. Now, um, I, I was having a hard time finding specifications on this because uh, while the William Optics website shows a nice diagram on how to adjust this, there's there's really no instructions, and the specifications tab on the website site still shows the old. Uh, flat 61 it doesn't show the ad adjustable version so I wanted to talk a little bit about this now uh, this is really nice because it um, when you get this out of the box it uh, it comes compressed here and let me <laughs> see if I can open it there we go uh, it, it it comes all compressed and it may not be obvious again there's no no manual that comes with this so this scale uh, that's that's shown here uh, you can't see that scale when this is all all closed up uh, they do a good job on the site showing a graphic, but if you don't happen to stumble upon that, you're not going to know how to how to do this. Now, uh, with this mounted on the scope, with the uh, William Optics uh, T-mount uh, adapter, in this case for Canon, uh, it shows to uh, set this at 12.9 millimeters. Now, what I do is I adjust this out to 13. Uh, just so I can see that 13 scale and then back it off just so I can't see that so I'm assuming that's right around where where 12.9 millimeters is at and then I, I hold on to the uh, back end of it here uh, while I adjust this ring and uh, then I can lock that into place uh, without movement uh, going on and that's uh, that's proven to work pretty pretty well. So uh, using this setting and, and doing some imaging with this scope, it's it's proven pretty well. The other thing to point out with this adjustable flattener is this nice little knob here. When you when you loosen this up, uh, it does give you the ability to rotate this, and um, there is some some friction there. I believe that's what these these uh, screws are here, uh, but that allows you to orient your camera in the orientation that you want. A lot of the targets that I face here in the northern hemisphere of the United States uh, are almost straight overhead uh, at this time of, of the year. Right now it's January of uh, uh, 2019 and uh, often my camera is, is upside down or pointing in the wrong way so this, this gives you a very uh, nice way to orient the camera the way that you want uh, on your, your mount and uh, that works out pretty well. So I wanted to point out this. Uh, something else that might not be very uh, readily apparent is uh, basically you remove uh, this eyepiece mount here. Uh, I don't think you even have to loosen up these three screws because these three screws are for the eyepiece, a two inch eyepiece. Uh, and basically you, you unscrew this and that exposes the threads that this uh, flattener will fit right in. Uh, and, and then you can mount your, your camera T T-mount uh, here on the back end. So those are some of the things that I wanted to mention specifically about the scope. Uh, something else that I found in the documentation, and it's only mentioned one time, is when you uh, put the scope away, you should put it into, I forget if it says an airtight container or a watertight container, uh, but regardless, it says to put some moisture absorbing uh, things in there, like these little packets. Uh, now I found these uh, just on Amazon, and these are uh, have little indicator beads in them to if they're, they're overused. Um, again, found a whole packet of these things uh, on Amazon. Uh, I don't promote this particular brand or any brand for that matter, but uh, uh, hopefully these these will last me uh, for a long time. You can actually rejuvenate these things uh, in the oven or possibly even the microwave. So uh, I usually throw a couple of those in a in the bag and before I put my scope away uh, in its container. So uh, again, thank you for joining us here at the. Uh, Universal Observations uh, channel and hopefully we've given you some good information if you're a new user and maybe researching this telescope and potentially purchasing it uh, maybe I've answered some questions for you thank you for joining us today at uh, Universal Observations and uh, clear skies thanks